RuneScape is one of those games where you can do anything. And players really will do anything. Well, apart from one thing. Runecrafting is notoriously the most hated skill in old school RuneScape, but today is the day that everything changes. Forget the conventional training methods of old, the Runecrafting revolution is coming. Today we see the release of Guardians of the Rift. This mini game is all about runecrafting and brings with it new rewards that revolutionize the skill. Back in the day, runecrafting used to be one of the most profitable activities in runescape, but as the game has evolved, the skill has fallen behind. Guardians of the Rift brings runecrafting into the modern era and is the biggest skilling update of 2022. There's a lot of money to be made and maybe runecrafting can actually be fun. Guardians of the Rift isn't the only runecrafting update today. This is the true blood altar, and it's been in the game for two years, but we can't currently access it. Three, two, one, and normal people need a blood talisman to get into the true blood altar. Luckily for me, I'm a sweaty nerd with a max cape, so I can come straight in. And this looks very, very nice. Wow, I'm always a big fan of the art style at runecrafting altars. And at the blood altar, you can runecraft blood runes. No way. But this update is a lot more than that. There are up to four different ways that runecrafting has been made faster throughout the game. The first being that they've got rid of the delay when crafting runes, so you can instantly craft a second inventory of runes from your pouches. This alone is a blanket buff of around 10% for most runecrafting methods. With all the updates today, I expect to be runecrafting nearly 20,000 blood runes per hour. Yeah, I know that sounds insane, but stay tuned. The main source of the runecrafting revolution comes from the Guardians of the Rift mini game. But first, in order to do that, I have to do a quest. The Temple of the Eye. Temple of the Eye completed 5,000 runecrafting XP and it took around 15 minutes, so that's a pretty good trade. But what's more important is I can now go and do the Guardians of the Galaxy minigame. Towards the end of the Temple of the Eye quest, it's essentially a tutorial on how to play the Guardians of the Rift minigame. So yeah, don't just skip through the dialogue. There is a bank in the lobby area right next to the most important thing, the reward shop. Now you get abyssal pearls from the mini game that you can spend in here and these rewards are so good, but more about that later. Okay, let's figure out these mechanics then. I'm not about to make a day one guide because anything I say will get outdated in like 10 minutes. Oh my God, let us in. Take weak cell. Shit, they missed a trick. They should have called them incels. Um, we just got kicked out of the game. $11 and all that shit. <laughs> the first drop I've seen, someone actually got the Abyssal Needle. I really want that. It makes the Colossal Pouch, which can hold 40 Essence at once. And it's a combo of all the old pouches. That's mad. Classic update day activities. And we're logged out. Okay, so they're shutting down the worlds for some bugs. So apparently the bug was that you could drop trade your untradeables. So the game got rolled back again. What's the damage? No! <laughs> I'm gonna do the whole quest again, are you joking? Oh, mate. Wow, there must be a glitch in the matrix. Finally, I'm completing the game. Oh my days. <laughs> what an update day. Right, you search this thing and it can give you rewards. I'm looking for abyssal pearls that I can spend in the shop and buy the runecrafting outfit. That's my number one priority. From the reward rift, you can pull the abyssal needle to make that colossal pouch, which is so good for this mini game and all runecrafting. You can also get an abyssal lantern, which has different uses for the mini game based on which logs you burn in it. Never lucky, what's this? Intricate pouch. Oh, I got an XP lamp, nice. Oh, catalytic talisman. Let's go. That is a new reward. I think that's the one where I can access all of the runecrafting altars that aren't elementals. So including the blood one might be worth some money. I'm also getting 54k XP an hour, but once I get the colossal pouch, that's going to go up. You can turn the catalytic talisman into a tiara with a gold bar 
or by using the Grand Exchange. I think this looks pretty cool, actually. One other thing to mention is there is now a Guardians of the Rift minigame teleport. It takes you right here to the lobby. But it's also interesting because when you leave this portal, it's essentially a teleport to the base of the Wizard's Tower, which could be useful on a new account. I'm loving the mechanics of the minigame, but I don't want to go too in-depth because things always change after the release. But with that said... <laughs> Take 10 cells, mine 170 shards, craft your essence, choose the highest level open altar, make runes, return with the portal, then heal the barrier with the cell. Then use the yellow portal to mine the essence faster and choose your next altar based on balancing your energies. Then subscribe. I'm trigger happy. How much is a blood tally? 20 mil? Oh, 10 mil? No way, I've just paid 10 mil for one of them. Oh, come on. Please don't say I lose money on that. I can buy like three of them right now with my pearls. <laughs> Yo, what? I just got a dragon med from that bag. No way. Someone's gonna be out there with their series. Guardians of the Rift, only Iron Man coming soon. No way, this guy just got the pet. Look at it. Oh my days, it looks uh, interesting. Triangle headed thing. Yeah. Someone said it looks like Verzig's 15 year old emo daughter. And I kind of see it. Oh, don't you dare. It's so annoying seeing other people pulling the needle at the same time. At the same time that you're pulling it from the Rift. Come on. I need this. It's going to make it so much faster. And the lantern does as well. No. Oh my god. There's no way. This stupid fucking company. <laughs> oh. Two more pouches. Shield left off. What? That Iron Man is booming right now. No. I got the fucking cat ears talisman again. So far, I've got 549 pearls and I've reached into the rift 213 times and... I'm going on holiday to America soon and I definitely can't make it to the full outfit because it takes a long, 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 long time to get. So I'm going to have to dip. And I think I'm going to cash out and buy the Ring of Elements. Oh, well, I regret doing this. It's done. This ring is interesting though. I can charge it with all the elemental runes and some lore runes. And if I wear it, it's got no stat. What it does have though is the ability to teleport to any of the elemental altars. The air altar, where is this going to take me? Wow, south of Falador. This is actually quite a useful teleport for clue scroll steps and things like that. And of course the air altar is right there. Yeah, I, I haven't even seen any of these in their game. This like could be one of the earlier ones, I guess. Water telly, where is this going to go? Obviously the water altar, but these are spots where you don't really have teleports to get to. Kind of useful. Could down that hole for the Slayer. Or over there for some clues. I don't know. Earth Altar. Where's this one going to go? Probably not as useful. Yeah, not as useful because you can get the Lumberyard teleports. Although maybe for an Iron Man, this could also be good. And finally, the Fire Altar. Lava Runecrafting is the meta for XP. And it's here. This is quite far north. Close to the Scorpions, good for clues. But there is a little bit of a run to the Lava Altar, so... This wasn't actually as good as I was expecting for runecrafting. One of the cool things about the Ring of Elements is you can make combination runes at any of the elemental altars. Historically, you could only make lava runes because the Ring of Jeweling is right there next to the altar, but now you've got the choice of any. See, I can come and make myself some mud runes, which is actually very useful for any sort of Iron Man. And it's good XP. Plus, it's good money because they're 200 each. And yeah, it's probably like 2 mil an hour with all the outfit and stuff. While the ring may not speed up runecrafting lava runes, the Colossal Pouch certainly will because it's an extra 13 runes per run. So that increases the XP an hour a lot. The Ring of Elements is one of the tradable rewards in the shop. Now, the runecrafting outfit, that's what everyone is going to be going for right now because, hey, uh, how do I uncharge this thing? Wait. There's no way. I can't actually uncharge it. I can't uncharge it. When you teleport with the ring, the altar you teleport is the color of the teleport animation. The things you learn when you're teleporting 500 times with it. I bet so many people have fallen for that. They've bought the ring and whacked in 10k charges. I was about to. But yeah, there's probably not going to be many in the game. Not going to lie, because everyone's going for the runecrafting outfit as it is better profit. But I just have to, I have to go. 100 mil, come on. Oh, no way I actually sold for that. Let's fuck. What? Nah, who's who's paying this for this ring? I guess people think it's good for lava runecrafting, but yeah, they've just got absolutely scammed. To be fair, I have been doing the minigame for 14, 15 hours. There's probably not many people that can buy the ring, but 
Yeah. Don't uh, don't be expecting this tomorrow. And here I am with a brand new rune crafting outfit. I know it looks like infinity, but come on, let's just work with me here. I'm also with my colossal pouch. Yeah, I know my RNG does suck, but I just wanted to do some calculations about the power of all these rune crafting updates today. It's made rune crafting very profitable. Remember the delay removal, the pouch gives you more essence and the outfit gives you 60% more runes. Okay, down here for the true blood altar. This is the lower level shortcut that you can take to get to the blood altar, but there is a better one over here. The high agility one does need some mining as well, so that's not great for most people, but now I can get straight to the blood altar from the old corridor. I was using the Carol teleport method to get to the true blood altar. You can spawn inside in a fairy ring, but it's only very slightly faster and it's a bit more clicking. Of course, I'm using the highest agility level shortcut and blood essence to double all my blood runes crafted. My lap time was 58 seconds, which means you can craft over 13,000 blood runes per hour using this method, which is very useful for high level Iron Man accounts. For mains, unfortunately, the blood essence eats into the profit margin, so so this isn't the best rune to craft for money. Next up, I'm testing out the abyss. I use my achievement diary cape to teleport me right next to the edge of the wilderness so I can use the abyss as soon as possible. Obviously, the abyss has a bit of variation where you spawn, but with an average 50 second lap time, making double death runes, you can craft over 15,000 death runes per hour, which has basically no cost, meaning you can make 3 million gold per hour crafting death runes. And for the most profitable rune crafting method, it's crafting wrath runes. At 95 rune crafting, you can do this, no double runes runes or anything like that it's just simply going to the altar 43 second lap time and that means that you can get 9,000 wrath runes per hour which works out to be 4 million gold per hour this is very consistent and puts it alongside some of the best pvm money makers in the game overall i'd give this update a 9 out of 10 <laughs> Thank you.